the present problem simulates the cooling of a turbine blade. Since the turbine produces work by converting thermal heat energy into mechanical energy, increasing the temperature and initial pressure of the fluid increases the heat energy of the fluid, thereby increasing the rate of conversion of thermal energy to mechanical energy and ultimately increasing work production. Therefore, one of the most important issues related to turbines is to study the cooling systems of turbine blades to increase the efficiency of turbine operation, reduce the thermal stresses caused by high temperature on the surface of the blades and finally increase the blade's lifetime. One of the most common methods of cooling in turbines is to use hollow blades. It means to make the inside of the blades empty in order to flow the coolant of airflow. This cooling process takes place through internal cavities in various ways such as convection, spraying, layering and perforation. The this figure shows a view of the turbine blade with a special cooling working holes. The present problem simulates the cooling of a turbine blades. To simplify the problem model, considering the symmetrical structure of the turbine body and its blades, only one blade is simulated. The main purpose of the problem is to investigate the temperature distribution and change in thermal energy on the body and turbine blade. Therefore, the process of simulating the model and defining the boundary conditions of the model performed in such a way that the fluid behavior focused on heat transfer. The cooling process in this model is based on the definition of cool airflow in an empty space in the inner walls of the blade. These inner walls have a series of holes to increase the contact surface with the cold flow and thus increase the cooling process. Therefore, the boundary condition of heat transfer has been used on the surface of the outer and inner walls of the blades, so that the outer surface of the blade and its lower body, which are under the hot working airflow of the system, have a transfer coefficient equal to 200 watts per cubic meter and the temperature of 1672 degrees of Kelvin and the inner surface of the blade which is cooled by the cold airflow has a heat transfer coefficient of again 200 under a cold flow of 300 degree of Kelvin. The present three-dimensional model is drawn using the CATIA software and then imported into the design modeler software. The geometric structure of the model consists of a piece of turbine blade which includes the body of the turbine blade with a certain angle of curvature and cross sections of the airfoil, the inner wall with space and certain pores and the central base body under the blade or root. Uh, in fact, to simplify the problem due to the symmetry of blades, only modeling has been done for one blade. This figure shows a view of the geometry. Also, the meshing of the present model has been done using ANSYS meshing software. The mesh type is unstructured. The size of the grids in the areas adjacent to the inner cavities of the fins is smaller and more accurate. This figure shows the mesh. To simulate the present model, several assumptions are considered. For example, a pressure-based solver has been performed. The simulation has been performed in both fluid and thermal states or heat transfer, and also the simulation is a steady state, and the effect of the gravity on the fluid is not considered. In the scale mesh section, we can check and see the dimensions in all three directions and also view the length unit that is meter in this simulation. Also from the mesh display section, we can see all the boundaries and their surfaces. 
This is the blade surface. This is inner wall or low temperature walls. And this is the root of the blade. As we are going to investigate the heat transfer phenomena in the blade turbine for the cooling phenomena, so it is necessary to activate the energy equation. The flow regime is assumed to be a laminar flow. There are two main materials. For this simulation, the fluid is air with the specified density, viscosity, and other material properties, and also the solid material assumed to be the aluminium. The computational domain is filled by the fluid that the fluid material is air. The operating pressure in the operating condition section is equal to the atmospheric pressure. All the Walls, including blade, the inner wall, and also the root, are a stationary wall with no slip. Also, all the thermal condition for all walls, all three walls, is the thermal condition equal to the convection. So, for every wall, a heat transfer coefficient and also a free stream temperature should be identified. The free stream temperature uh, is uh, equal to 1,672 degree of Kelvin for the blade wall and also all the heat transfer coefficients for all three walls is equal to 200. The inner wall has the lowest temperature and has the duty of cooling in for the turbine blade. So the minimum temperature of uh, 300 degrees of Kelvin has been specified for this thermal condition of this wall. The root temperature is equal to the temperature of the blade. The simple algorithm in the solution method section uses a relationship between velocity and pressure corrections to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. Also, the pressure velocity coupling scheme control, controls the manner in which pressure and velocity are updated. When the pressure base solver is used, the scheme can be either segregated, like simple, uh, that uh, pressure and velocity are updated uh, separately, or coupled that the pressure and velocity are updated simultaneously. 
Uh, Ansys Fluent provides the following segregated types of algorithms uh, like Simple, Simple C, Piso, and Fractional Step or FSM. In general, segregated methods like Simple that has been chosen in the CFD simulation are faster per iteration, while the couple algorithm usually requires fewer iteration to converge. For setting under relaxation factors, we should say that the pressure-based solver uses under relaxation of equations to control the update of computed variables at each iteration. In ANSYS Fluent, the default under relaxation parameters for all variables are set to values that are near optimal for the largest possible number of cases. These values are suitable for many problems, but for some particularly nonlinear problems, uh, for example, some turbulent flows or high Riley number, natural convection problems, it is prudent to reduce the under relaxation factors initially. It is good practice to begin uh, calculation using the default under relaxation factors if the residuals continue to increase after the first four or five iterations, you should reduce the under relaxation factors. Occasionally, you may make changes in the under relaxation factors and resume your calculation only to find that the residuals begin to increase. This often results from increasing the under relaxation factors too much. A cautious approach is to save a data file before making any change to the under relaxation factors and uh, to give the solution algorithm a few iterations to adjust to the new parameters. Typically, an increase in the under relaxation factors bring about a slight increase in the residuals, but these increases usually disappear as the solution progresses. If the residuals jumped by a few orders of magnitudes, you should consider halting the calculation and returning to the last good data file saved. Uh, you can use the residual monitors uh, dialog box to control the residual information that Fluent uh, software reports. In the equations section, the residual option indicates the name of each variable for which residual information is available. And the monitor indicates whether or not the residuals for each variable are to be monitored. You can toggle monitoring on and off for each variable by turning the corresponding checkbox in the monitor list on or off. The check convergence option indicates uh, whether or not the convergence of each variable is to be monitored. Uh, if convergence is being monitored, the solution will stop automatically when each variable meets its specified convergence criterion. You can check convergence only for variables for which you are monitoring residuals. You can toggle convergence checking on and off for each variable by turning the corresponding checkbox in the check convergent uh, list on or off. And finally, the absolute criteria uh, or relative criteria shows the re uh, residual value for which the solution of each variable will be considered to be converged. To set this value uh, manually, enter the new value in the corresponding absolute criteria field. And that's it. As there is no defined inlet or outlet boundary conditions in the simulation, it's better to use the hybrid initialization method. The number of iteration is equal to 50,000 and just click on the calculate button to start the solution.
For obtaining every two-dimensional contour, we can uh, achieve this desired contour on every plane that we want. X constant, Z constant, or Y constant. In this results, we have identified two different planes, X and Y, that we are going to display all the contours on these two planes. The static pressure contour in all the domain is equal to the atmospheric pressure, so it's equal to zero Pascal. Also, as the domain is filled by the air material, so all the domain density is equal to the air density. The velocity magnitude is equal to zero in all the domain since uh, the buoyancy effect is not considered in this simulation. If we consider the buoyancy effect in the simulation, the velocity uh, will not be equal to zero anymore. This is the temperature contour in both X and Y constant planes. As we can see, the maximum temperatures are near the blade and the root. And as we get close to the inner walls, the temperature decreases dramatically. The reason is that the inner wall temperature is equal to uh, 300 degree of Kelvin. That is more than 1300 degree of Kelvin, less than the root and the blade temperature. So the convection occurred and this is the results of the temperature contour. The turbine blade cooling is obvious by considering the temperature contour. Following this way, we show the geometry as a transparent geometry. So we can show and display every desired contour uh, without ignoring the geometry. By the way, this is the way to make a desired plane in every direction, in every dimension that we want. So following this path, we can make every desired plane to show, of course, the contour on that. Here is the summaries of the problem definition and problem solving steps in the table as a review. To benefit from Master CFT services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at Hope you enjoy!